So with that, I would like now to bring the video forward and uh, share with you my favorite Evernote features. All right, I am gonna walk you through my five favorite Evernote features and it's, it's kind of like Christmas. It's tough for me to say exactly which of these features I like the most. But before we start with it, let's make sure that we're all on the same page with how I look at Evernote. Because uh, when we teach, when I teach my Evernote courses, I always talk about Evernote being your digital bank account. And I think that's the best analogy uh, that I can come up with for Evernote. Evernote's a place where you store valuable information. All the valuable information, just like a bank is where you store your wealth uh, or part of your wealth. You store part of your knowledge in Evernote. And the more that you invest in Evernote, the more knowledge, the more information that you store in Evernote, the more equity you have in Evernote, the more valuable it is, the more options you have to withdraw. So Evernote kind of does three things. There's three parts to Evernote. There's the information gathering aspect of Evernote where we use it to store information or create information that we then store. There's the storage aspect of it where it retains it for us. And then there's the retrieval aspect of Evernote where we go to find it. And that's where Evernote's super powerful search comes in. So we're gonna take a look at kind of how that all fits together, uh, but how it fits based on my five favorite things. And the first thing is something that I use every single day of the week, and it's called the Evernote Web Clipper. Now this is a free tool from Evernote that installs in your browser of choice. Uh, you see it here running in Chrome, and the Evernote Web Clipper is a little extension which installs, which allows you to clip information to, and sync it to your Evernote account. Now, for example, uh, I use it when I'm doing my research, planning out uh, different videos that we're creating. I use it in my personal life for, for things that I'm interested in. Right now, I'm on a bit of a health food kick, so I wanna make almond milk, so I found this little article on making almond milk and I wanted to save it. So here's a prime example. So in the past, how would I have saved this particular article? I might have created a document uh, and saved it in, you know, in, in copied and pasted the information into the document. I could have saved it as a bookmark, but we all know bookmarks are a place that information goes to never be found again. Uh, so there's a few different ways that I could have saved. I could have left it open in a tab for weeks and weeks because it's something that I'm interested in. And don't tell me you haven't done that. Uh, but what happens with the Evernote Web Clipper is because it is synced to our Evernote account, all I do is I find a piece of valuable information like this, I click on it, and then Evernote launches this little utility which allows me to take this article and to save it as a bookmark, which uh, is just a little short snippet. It'll allow me to save the full article, uh, which includes all of the ads and all of the other information. A simplified article, which uh, tries to strip out as much of the uh, as much of the advertising and extra information as possible. A full page, which includes everything on the page, including navigation, etc. It just basically takes the whole page. Or it allows me to take a screenshot, which will allow me to clip a graphic, to take a snapshot of it, which I could then annotate if I wanted to. Uh, now, the cool thing is, once I've selected the information that I want to save, I can organize it by storing it in the different notebooks that I've got, or I can add tags which add context to all of our different notes. And look, this is how intelligent it is. It recognizes that there's food primarily on this page, and it automatically puts it in my cooking notebook. Now, I can choose to store it in a different notebook, but it's just fine to have it stored in the cooking notebook. Uh, so then I click Save, and now what happens is Evernote takes this information, it copies it, and it then syncs it to my Evernote notebook. And I'll take you over to Evernote and show you it in the notebook in just a few seconds. But this idea of anything that I see in any browser, anything I see on the internet that I want to store, that I want to save for future reference, that I can capture it as easily as just launching the Evernote Web Clipper and then saving it across so that I can then find it later, is phenomenal. Now, how I go about finding it is I can search based on the title, I can search based on the text, and Evernote will even parse out text from graphics within an article. So it'll be very, if I'm searching for, for almond milk, I'm gonna find this article uh, when I need to find that article uh, in Evernote. Let's just jump over into Evernote and show you that because it should have had time to sync. I'm not 100% positive, but I'm gonna go into my notebooks here, and in my notebooks, I've got a cooking notebook, which I will go to. Let's find it here, where is it? It's in personal. There it is, there's my cooking notebook. And if I open the cooking notebook, how to make almond milk at home. So there's the article that it copied for me uh, with for how to make almond milk at home. So now I can find it if I do a search. And if I was to search for it, uh, if I was to go into Evernote search, 
Uh, I will just go search almond. And I'm sure, yeah, almond milk and almond cookies. The two things that I want to cook are available to me that easily. Now, that's my first favorite feature of Evernote is this fact that it stores all of this information for me. Now, the next thing I want to show you is more a technique than a feature within Evernote, but it's how Evernote has evolved within my personal life, and it's the way that I've taught many people to use Evernote, and that's the concept of what I call starter notes and anchor notes. Now, within Evernote, that we're looking at the desktop version on the Mac here, on the left-hand side, we've got this, uh, this sidebar, which includes something called shortcuts. Now, the shortcuts are just quick links to get us to our most popular notes, the notes that we use a lot. Now, I use a technique of kind of creating master notes that I call anchor notes to be able to store all the information that I need in any one topic. Now, these do not have to be um, clean notes that, are, that, that, that look great to everybody else. These are notes that are working documents that I work on on a daily basis. And so this is all of the different demos that I'm thinking about doing for my upcoming, uh, for, my, for the next little while upcoming in YouTube. And as you see, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess to anybody else looking at it. But to me, it makes total sense because anytime I find, get an idea, I just jump into this note, add the information to the note, and then, and then, and then just save it. So what that ends up doing for me is it allows me to just kind of remove the pressure of getting a good idea, got a great idea, and not worrying about how I'm going to remember that idea when the time comes for me to be working on a new video. Instead, I put the information in here, and then as I'm looking for Muse, as I'm getting ready to do my next cycle of production, I just scroll through this, and this helps me uh, make sure that I don't forget any great ideas for upcoming videos. So that's just one way that I use anchor notes. I also have this master document, which I'll let you have a quick peek at. This really isn't for public consumption, but this is everything that I'm planning to do business-wise for the next year, basically. I've got all of the different ideas, what we're gonna be doing as far as people, uh, all of the different uh, upcoming, this is, this is the advanced scheduling uh, thing that we do for creating these weekly webinar Wednesdays where I take a look here uh, and I put down all the ideas for upcoming webinars and then I organize them and, and basically put them in place. But you can see it's, it's not a document, again, that's designed uh, for public consumption, but it's a working document that makes me far more efficient and makes sure that I don't forget good ideas or do, that I don't forget things that I should be doing related to diff my different ideas. Now, related to these anchor notes, is the concept of starter notes. Now, if you've taken my Evernote's quick start guide, uh, which uh, we'll drop a link in, in here during the video for, uh, which is a free tutorial to get people started using Evernote, one of the techniques that I teach and I really believe in and has worked tremendously well for people who've taken this quick start guide is creating the concept of doing some starter notes, which are like anchor notes, that have basic information that you can go back to that you can find anytime you need it. So for example, here's a list of, you know, kind of starter notes that you might want to start with. Uh, the license plate number, not just of your car, but of your partner's car. Have you ever been like borrowing your partner's car, gone to a location and gone in and they've asked you to register the license plate number and you can't remember, of course you don't remember your partner's license number. Well, you open Evernote, there's the person, there's your partner's license number, you can share it, you can, you can have access to it immediately. For people like me who forget important dates till usually the day before, how about having all of your partner's preferences? Her dress size, if dress size, shoe, ring size, uh, the scent they prefer, maybe your kid sizes, loyalty numbers for your different, different cards you can store within Evernote. Ah, here's a terrific idea for your starter notes. Go around your house and take a picture of all of the unique hardware items in your house that you occasionally have to buy. The water filter under your sink. Can you ever remember what model water filter it is? No, you have to take it out and look at it in order to get it. Take a picture of it. That way when you're in the hardware store and you're picking up other things, don't sh I should pick up a filter, you know exactly what it is. What about furnace filters? Can you remember the size of your furnace filter? I can't, so I take a picture of the furnace filter, then I can remember it. Unique light bulbs, those sorts of things. Take pictures of all the serial numbers of your of your, uh, of your appliances uh, for insurance purposes, of jewelry for insurance purposes, uh, those sorts of things. How about taking a picture and a screenshot of your Wi-Fi router settings? Those sort of things can all be stored in starter notes, which you can use as anchor notes so that you can get to anytime you need it. It's, it's not the way that you're gonna use Evernote 
on a daily basis because you just do these things occasionally. But when you do need access to the kind of this, the, this information that runs your life, Evernote is the place that you can trust it and store it. And when I talk about Evernote being a digital bank account, these are the sort of deposits that make a huge difference because every time you make a withdrawal, anytime you use that information, uh, you basically are a winner. You've saved some time, you've saved some money, you've saved yourself an extra trip to the store. And that is, that's to me, the magic behind what makes Evernote such an efficient tool. The third favorite thing I have in Evernote, and this isn't in order of preference, this is just in kind of a narrative order, is the idea behind how the Evernote camera works. Now, the Evernote camera is, a, is built in to your mobile device, and for, in, for my mind, they have done just a spectacular job of the camera. So, if you think about the collecting of information, which I talked about, which is such a major part of what Evernote is all about. The, uh, the ability to use the Evernote Web Clipper to capture information. Your phone becomes a really great partner for you in the collection of information. We often think about the phone as the place that we go to retrieve information because so often you're out and you're looking up that your partner's dress size. It, 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 you're, you're grabbing that Evernote note when you're shopping for something for somebody or something like that. So you're retrieving information, which is terrific. But take a look at what it does when we launch the photo app, uh, which basically launches the camera in Evernote uh, in both uh, iOS and Android, is it has this smart camera which takes a look at whatever it is you're capturing. If it's a document, it captures it. And watch what happens after it stores it. It's, I've just got to position it properly here. Come on. There it is. Captured it. Look, it takes a look at what it is, and then it determines. This is a smart capture that says, this is a document and I can actually click on that and I can choose to save it as a photo, a document, a color document, a post-it note or a business card. You can also use it. Let me show you that same process, but here we have it in, we have a business card that finds the information and it parses out all of the information out of that business card almost instantly. And the cool thing is it will then sync this information to my contact list or sync it to Evernote, if I, not to Evernote, excuse me, to LinkedIn, if I've set up my account that way, so it'll actually create a contact with the individual on LinkedIn. The camera for capturing ideas and capturing information is sheer genius. Now, it doesn't just work from this perspective of capturing business cards and documents as we've just done, but it'll also, you could also use it to capture a whiteboard where you're, where you're spitballing ideas with individuals. You can use it to capture, of course, all of your invoices, uh, or sorry, all of your receipts when you're, out do, do, uh, when you're out having a meal so that you can quickly create an expense report and you've got those documents that you can then send to your accountant or send to your bookkeeper. The Evernote camera really extends how Evernote collects information. It turns it into an information vacuum cleaner uh, is the way that I kind of look at it. So the Evernote camera is uh, is one of my top and favorite features. Now let's talk about Evernote's integration and how Evernote works with other key apps. Now Evernote for me at the heart of my productivity system means that I have to ensure that Evernote works with the other apps that I choose to use to manage my life. And that's where integration comes in. And Evernote fortunately integrates with so many different apps. And even when Evernote doesn't natively integrate with those apps, there are tools that we can use that allow us to create that integration. Tools like IFTTT or Zapier that allow you to create different conduits for Evernote to exchange information with different applications. Now I'm gonna show you one very cool feature which I really like called Task Clone. Now Task Clone is a tool that allows you to take Evernote and connect it with your task and to-do list manager or your calendar. And the thought being that while you're taking notes in Evernote, you're often going to create items that should be tasks and to-dos. Now you can create those in Evernote and actually demark them as tasks and to-dos within Evernote, but I don't think that's the most elegant way to do it because personally, as in the case with many of you, I prefer to use a task manager for managing all of my tasks and to-dos. In our case, we use a sauna. So let me show you how this tool called Task Clone works. Now Task Clone is really quite inexpensive. It's uh, about $2 a month to use. And it's this conduit that connects Evernote 
to your other apps. As I said, it connects them to almost all of the different apps that you're going to be that you would be interested in using. Now I've got it set up. You can see here this is actually the script that enables the process that I'm about to show you. But it's very simple to set up. You create a connection between your tool Asana, so you have to give Asana permission for Task Clone to to access its uh, to access its internal workings, and I tell it which exactly which account it's working with, which is the Dototech account create a, a project that it's going to and in my particular case it's Steve's tasks I'll show you right here I've got a it's a blank right now I've got no tasks in it but that's the project called Steve's tasks and then we create a trigger tag now in Evernote we can add context to any notes by applying tags. And we can use, so we use tags primarily for sorting. But in this particular case, something really nice happens. Once you give Evernote permission to talk to Task Clone and Task Clone permission to talk to Asana, then Task Clone can take over the responsibility of monitoring everything that happens in Evernote. And when we apply the tag, the tag that we show there, let me just show you that tag again, the tag that's called Steve To Do. When we apply the Steve to do tag, then Task Clone will take all of the items that are demarked as tasks, and I'll show you how we do that in just a moment, and migrates them over into Asana. It sounds a little complicated and it's a mouthful, but let me show you it's in its simplest form how it works. Here's where I assign my tags. I'm going to assign the Steve to do tag, which I created, which is, means that I want this, the tasks that are in this note to be moved over. But how can we tell what tasks are? I highlight the tasks and I give them a checkbox. Anything with the checkbox in front of it in a note becomes a separate task. And how do I know that it's been sent over to Asana? Well, the integration will demark all of the notes that the that they that, that, that have been synced with a little designation of TC. And if we just watch the screen here for a second, it takes a second for it to run and it runs kind of on a regular routine. But once Task Clone gets notification from Evernote that there are tasks that have the tag, the Steve to do tag, there it is. It just happened. It just removed the tag. You can see that it removed the tag and it added the TC, the Task Clone, to these notes. So if I move over now, this is where it gets totally magical. I move over to my Asana account. Let's open Steve's task. And there are the tasks that I created. Send presentation to client, book flights, and book hotel. And there they are in Evernote. And this is where it gets really cool. If I click on any one of these, I have the web link back to the original note. So I can see the note in the web. I can open it in Evernote or I can open it just in the browser so I can see all of the context. If there's other information within that note that I need to see, I can see that. So this level of integration between Evernote and all of our other productivity tools is one of my favorite features of Evernote. It's what allows Evernote to sit at the heart of my productivity system and everything else to kind of riff off of what we do with Evernote. Now the final of my favorite features in Evernote is the ability within Evernote to publish content in a variety of different ways. Now, we are launching uh, the third version of our Evernote Made Easy course. And one of the magic pieces of our course is every lesson I do in my Evernote course, I take and I use this feature here. I go under the Share tool within Evernote and I copy the public link. And this allows me to take this note and then share it with others, allow others to view the note even if they don't have Evernote. And it comes down to how Evernote stores our notes and syncs between our services. What happens with any note in Evernote is you create the note, Evernote creates the note, and then it creates a copy of the note on the web, in the cloud, in Evernote's cloud services. And because it's on the web, they actually have a URL that they can assign to it because it's just like any other web page at that particular point, but in this case, it's an Evernote note. If we choose to share that note by copying the public link, what happens is Evernote says, oh, Steve wants to share this note, and it turns the note from private to public to allow it to be shared, and then by going into any web browser and pasting in the URL that we just loaded, which is, this is the URL for that module, for that lesson of the course, if we open that, it will then open in a browser the contents so we can share it right within the browser. Isn't that great? You can see all of the content there, the exact same as we've seen right here within this within this Evernote page. So this allows me then to create content in Evernote, 
publish it to people, share the URL, and have them be able to access the information even if they don't have Evernote. And if they, if they do have Evernote, they can actually view this note in Evernote or they can copy it to their own Evernote account and store it, which is the way that we do our course, where they take each individual module of the course, they save it to their own Evernote notebook. So at the end of the course, they've got an Evernote textbook that was created in Evernote. But this publishing functionality gives you some tremendous options for being a content creator and sharing content. So if you say create a lot of PDFs where you share documents with others, you could consider instead of creating a PDF, creating Evernote notes. That way when you make modifications to the note, you don't have to republish the PDF, but you can just, uh, anybody with the current link will get the most current version of the note. Plus you have total control over it. You can stop the public sharing at any point if you don't want to share the note out any further. And you don't just have this option with the notes, but you can also set up notebooks and you can publish notebooks to the web. So you could actually publish a notebook that contains, a, a, have an entire course that you publish or an entire book that you publish with chapters in it. You can publish out of Evernote and people can view it in their browser without downloading any special software. Evernote as a content publishing tool is tremendously powerful. So that are, is kind of a summary of my five favorite Evernote features. The ability to collect information very easily using Evernote's uh, web clipper or the Evernote camera, being able to bring content into Evernote. The fact that we can create anchor notes and starter notes so that we can have these living documents, these dynamic documents that store really important information that we need instant access to and we can gain access to at any point with an Evernote. Of course, you can also do that with standard Evernote notes, but by creating these anchor notes or these starter notes, you've got a kind of a, a home for that, sort of, for that sort of content. The ability to integrate Evernote with other productivity tools very easily at a very deep level. And even when there isn't native integration or built-in integration within Evernote, there are third parties like IFTTT, Zapier, or Task Clone, which we showed you, that will allow you to create deep integration with Evernote and other applications. And finally, we can use Evernote as a publishing platform in its own right, where we can use it to share content out to our community in a variety of different ways that gives us total control and doesn't cost us anything to publish. It's no wonder that Evernote is my favorite tool. So let's, I think it's time we're gonna jump in and take some questions. So we'll return to the live part of the webinar now. And oh, Lordy, Lordy, we have nearly 500 people in the room. So we've, we've kept everybody in. So that is awesome sauce. Uh, so those are my five favorite. It's, it's like a kid in a candy store when I look at using Evernote because there's so many little things that I use, but I, I tried to find things that really uh, kind of expose you to different ideas and different ways of using Evernote. And I think we succeeded in that, the idea of the, uh, any of the anchor notes I saw a lot of people responded quite positively to etc so here's what we're going to do right now coming out of this is we're going to get to your questions in just a few moments uh, but before we do that I've got a poll and then I've got to fill you in on the early bird offer that we have for everybody's version 3 so first of all the poll I want to know which features that I talked about uh, you find most valuable most valuable a bull. So which <laughs> of the features do you think is most valuable? Is it the web clipper? Is that the one that's your favorite feature? The camera, the Evernote camera. I saw a lot of people commented that they hadn't even used the camera in Evernote, which just is mind blowing to me. Is it the integration? A lot of people love the idea of Task Clone. I see Troy Christmas from Task Clone is in the house. Hey, Troy, thanks for it. He's always been a great supporter of the Dotto Tech brand. He's the creator of Task Clone. Is it the integration? Is it the concept of anchor notes and and uh, starter notes that you, that that you use that you really like, or is it the fact that you can publish it? You can actually use it as a publishing platform, and no surprise there. See, the web clipper, which to me speaks so much to where Evernote meets a need. We are inundated with so much information flowing across our computer screen on a daily basis in the browser. So many valuable things that we want to be able to capture and and find a way to get to again. And the web clipper facilitates that so elegantly. Uh, I'm, a, I'm in agreement. Whenever I, whenever I show people ever, the Evernote web clipper, if they haven't used it before, they go, how did I not know about that? It is, it is my favorite feature as well. So good stuff. All right, so I'm gonna end that poll. Oh, I'm gonna vote here myself. There we go, there we go. Uh, and I am going to end the poll so that we can get on how are we doing for time? We've got a half an hour left, so I want to have lots of time for questions. So I'm right. going to now jump in. First of all, if you'll humor me, 
and fill you in on something that I've been working hard on, which is the new version of Evernote Made Easy. So uh, let me fill you in on that, and it'll just take about five minutes and fill you in on what you can do if you want to take advantage of our new offer. So Evernote Made Easy is our flagship course. It's the course that really started a lot of the Dottotech brand out. Uh, it's, as far as I'm concerned, the fastest way to learn to use and master Evernote. What happens is you get 10 lessons in 10 days. It starts on Monday, uh, but you can sign up at any time after that. You don't have to do it in 10 consecutive days, but you can be through it all in 10 days. And each day, I send you a email which contains a link to an Evernote note. This is sheer brilliance, my friends. This is maybe the best idea I've ever had in my life. <laughs> where I take Evernote and I've created all of the lesson content in the Evernote notes, and that's what we send to you, is a link to that note. And then you save that note in your own Evernote notebook, and at the end of the course, you have an Evernote notebook, which is a textbook on how to use Evernote. It's, 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 and, and it starts you in the Evernote habit, teaching you to use Evernote by using Evernote. I think it's, 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 I think it's a great idea. So that's, the, that's how the course is delivered. Now, the course itself, uh, each lesson focuses on one topic. We start with the basics of covering off Evernote. Uh, then we go into talking about the structure so that you can understand the anatomy of notes and notebooks. I saw a lot of people today asking about the fact, or one person commented on the fact that they found they had too many notebooks and they weren't, uh, they got found Evernote confusing. We teach you how to properly structure because Evernote has a very flat structure. It's just got notes and notebooks and then stacks of notebooks. It's not a hierarchical tool. It's based on search. So we get you understanding how search works within Evernote and how to use Evernote and how to use the interface. Then we talk about collecting information, all the things that we were talking about today with the Evernote Web Clipper. We teach you how to use that effectively. And we also teach you how to use the camera and all of those other tools. From then, we move on to the fourth lesson. You're already getting pretty good at Evernote by the end of the third lesson, where we talk about Evernote in mobile. I love using Evernote in the mobile environment, and it just works terrifically well. Then we move to advanced note taking, where we're uh, using Evernote as a task manager, combining your notes, linking your notes. The beginning of the whole process of publishing within Evernote happens in advanced note taking, as well as formatting your notes. Then we take you into the world of integration, where we take Evernote. Uh, actually, April, is that your is that audio coming from you guys? Maybe you can mute your mic. I can get a little bit of extra I can, audio. Coming. I can. I can. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, then we get into Evernote's integration, where we integrate. We show you how to use Task Clone and other tools for integrating Evernote and making it at the heart of your productivity system. Because Evernote doesn't live alone. Uh, you still want to have a task manager. You still want to have a calendar. You still want other tools, uh, perhaps a conversation tool, a communications manager like Slack. How does Evernote fit into that entire environment? Then, in the last three days, we talk about sharing and collaboration, which is publishing within Evernote, the entire concept of using it to, to, to reach out and to actually publish to others. Lesson eight might be the most important one. It's making the most out of search. Once you collect a large volume of information into Evernote, it's crucial to understand how to get that information out of Evernote. And Evernote search is, is, is very robust. And if you master search, you're never, you're, it, it just makes using Evernote so much more efficient. So we cover that. Then we talk about backup and security. And there are issues around security with Evernote. I know we'll get into them in the Q&A. We're gonna talk about what's appropriate to store in Evernote, what's not, and how you can mitigate any risks with using Evernote as far as your own personal security and privacy is concerned. And also, of course, the importance of backing information up. If you rely on Evernote as much as many of us do, you need to have a backup strategy to make sure that your content is safe in case something ever happens. And then finally, this is a brand new lesson that I just created for this new version of the course. It's talking about the philosophies of building your own personal productivity system around Evernote because everybody does things a little bit differently. But I'm going to talk through some of the different most popular styles of using Evernote, whether it's going to be based on notebooks or whether it's going to be based on a tagging structure, uh, how kind of the nomenclature that you're going to use. We're going to talk about the Evernote philosophies. And there's a couple of kind of broad philosophies that have grown out of Evernote. One might resonate with you. Chances are you're going to take the best of one, the best of something else, and you're going to build your own philosophy, as I've done with using Evernote. And that is all in the final and tenth lesson. Each one of these lessons should take you about a half an hour to go through. There are a series of videos and, uh, and, and a few little exercises. I'm not too big on making you do exercises, but instead I kind of show you the processes. And the way that it's structured is as you grow in your capability of using Evernote, uh, and as you'll end up starting using Evernote more and more each day as it kind of, it should 
effortlessly kind of fall into place within your own existing system. Nobody is going to change the way they do things to use Evernote. Evernote has to modify within the way you do things and then allow you to kind of grow in your personal productivity system. And that's what we hope to accomplish with Evernote Made Easy. So the regular price, we've actually, we used to sell it for $99, but we've up the price because there's so much more valuable value now to $149 is going to be the price. The first lesson is going to be shipped on October 9th. And you can sign up at that point or any time after. But because you folks are part of our community, we have an early bird offer. So you can save $50 until until the course launches uh, using the promo code uh, that, that's there on the screen. You can just copy that. It's ECEV3EB. Um, and actually, I'll get the April to drop in the... Uh, the uh, the link, the offer, so that people know where to click to go if they are interested in purchasing. Now, our patrons at Patreon, uh, there is uh, the people who support us on Patreon. They give us $10 a month to keep Dotto Tech going, and for that, they get access to all of our webinar archives, but they also get 50% off on all of our courses. Now, I'm going to point out that the 50% off for our patrons is on the regular price, not on the early bird price. So they can get it for an additional about $20 off if you are one, are one of our patrons. That's if you haven't already uh, got a license for Evernote Made Easy. If you've already uh, gotten the course in the past, if you're already one of our students, upgrades are always free on Dottotech. So if you purchase Evernote Made Easy version 3, when I release Evernote Made Easy version 4 in a year or so from now, you will receive the upgrade for free. That's the way that we roll here on Dottotech. And that is it as far as Evernote Made Easy's launch goes. I'm really looking forward to people signing up and taking the new course. We've worked really hard on it. It's been a, uh, it's I, I've I've gone back to the drawing board twice in how I wanted to uh, how I wanted to put all of the content together for Evernote Made Easy. But I'm really happy with how it's all working out. So I think you guys are going to like it. So welcome aboard those new people that are joining us. To my existing students, you can look forward to seeing the new version of it rolling out and coming into your inbox as of Monday morning. So yeah, looks time for great. questions. It does All, right. Look great. All right. So our friend Avram is asking, can you use one link per client to something you publish? Uh, can you use one link per client, whereas you're just determining which link with a client, like a unique URL for each client? So it's pretty, it's exact. I'm not sure. So can okay. you use so one link per client to something you publish? Well, if, if you're only sending it to one client, yes. It, it, every time you create a public link in Evernote, it creates a new link, but it's only going to create one link per note. So you're not going to have a unique note per client. You'd have to duplicate the note in order to have a different sharing link for that note. Okay. Um, is the camera app available on the free phone app? Yes. You know? The camera app's available. And a lot of people never find it. it it's slightly different in Android and iOS. Uh, but the, in the new version of iOS, you just press your button, press and hold on that little plus key on it, <coughs> and uh, then you and you're able to um, and and you're able to to access the camera. It's all of the camera functionality is available in all of the versions of Evernote. Okay. Um, can Evernote replace bookmarking? Yes, Evernote does replace bookmarking. Evernote should replace bookmarking. That's a big part of what the Evernote Web Clipper is. If you just want to clip the web snippet, which is just basically the URL, that will succeed there. But yeah, it's completely replaced bookmarking for me. All right. Um, Douglas is asking, Web Clipper for iPad Pro. What do I do as I work around it if it is not supported? Yeah. In the mobile versions, uh, the, the Web Clipper has become a desktop version or a client version uh, for the uh, or for in, in the browser on your computer. So the web, so the Evernote uses built-in OS functionality for clipping content. You don't have quite the same granular control of deciding exactly what uh, notebook or tags are attached, but basically it's, you're just using both in Android and in uh, iOS uh, the Evernote the uh, built-in. Uh, sharing functionality and clipping functionality in the operating system. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit more about how Anchor Notes work? Yes, I can. And it, sorry, I keep getting distracted because I've got my new Apple Watch, and I, I don't know if you can see, but it's it's got. Like, I, I noticed your band earlier. <laughs> All notifications are coming, and so people are purchasing the course. So to everybody that's welcome. This it makes me happy. I do a happy dance every time somebody buys something. So, so I does it glow like, in the dark? Well, Does yeah, that band glow in the dark? No, no, it's it's no, a workout it's band. Like... It's got holes in it because I exercise with it. It allows the oh, sweat. Oh, it has little neons. Yeah. Ew, um, 
Anchor notes. So anchor notes for me are uh, are kind of these living documents that I create around a, sim a simple topic. Uh, and to me, they become my virtual whiteboard. You know how quite often when you're working on a project, you have a whiteboard that's constantly things are being erased and moved around as you're working on a project. That's how I use anchor notes. So all of the different projects that we're working on in the Dotto Tech space, when they're in my spitballing phase when i'm writing down ideas giving thoughts writing little drafts trying to trying to figure out what it is uh that i use as an anchor document so i work on that document sometimes i share it with team members and sometimes i don't uh but so that's so for example i'm always trying to decide what's coming up next week for webinar wednesday so that one that you saw there that grid that is always you know got you know three or four different potential shows for next week until I decide on the real one. And then it goes into a sauna where it gets entrenched and it's actually going to be published. But before that, it just lives in this, this anchor note. And so the fact that I've got it there in the sidebar in Evernote means that I can get back to it really quickly whenever I need. So if I find a little bit of information, similar to using the web clipper, if I just find a URL or an idea, or I just think of something, I know I can jump really quickly into that note without doing any search or anything. I just click on that note, type in or copy whatever it is I need to do. And then I, and then I can go back on with my day. And what it does is it frees me up with, where I don't have to use uh, my memory to remember something or write something down somewhere else. It's always in one place. And the fact I can have multiple anchor notes, depending on how many projects I'm on, I, I find it to be a, a huge productivity boost for me. So, um, so I just, you're getting some comments on your, um, Steve, you're such a tech geek. And Peggy said, you're so cute how excited you get over technology. Well, actually, I get more excited about money coming in. <laughs> but I do get excited. About well, when technology makes a difference in your life and gives us the function, the ability to, to go beyond what we could do before, that's when it gets exciting. You are a techie. Come on. I am. A I'd, <laughs> yeah. be, I'd, I'd be a fool right. to deny that. <laughs> All right. So Betty is asking, do you have any reservations of publishing for content with um, an Evernote public link. For example, if your students share, you are exposing your valuable content to the yeah. World Wide Web. Yeah, that's, you know, that's always a possibility. So for example, if you were an unscrupulous person and you bought my course, you could take every one of my Evernote links, notes, and you could share it with somebody else and I couldn't stop you. So yes, I don't have a gateway on my content the way I might if I had a membership area or I had a traditional course structure. Have it, but I'm not of the philosophy. I'm of the philosophy that if somebody's going to steal my content, they're probably going to find it anyways and steal it, and they're probably never going to be my customer anyways. And so, uh, rather than spending a lot of time trying to lock things down philosophically, I take that energy and use it to try and grow my community. And it's just a philosophical way I approach things. And I think at the end of the day that we end up with more. Do I lose some business because of it? Do some people take advantage of me? Yeah, but. That's on them, not on me, as far as I'm concerned at that point. It, it hasn't got, it's, 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 you know, musicians face it on a daily basis on a far worse way than I do, yet they still manage to build awesome careers. So I'm just, I just prefer to look forward rather than trying to, trying to stop the few people that are going to take advantage. Oh, I knew I liked you. <laughs> that was cute. I like that. Um, all right. So is there a way to shorten the name of the link on Evernote when sharing public or a private link? Yeah, you could use Bitly or any other link shortening tool on it, for sure. It's just a URL. It's a URL like any other URL. All right. Uh, question, scannable or camera? I like scannable the best, but it was kind of, it would have been too confusing to add another app in the presentation. Scannable is an iOS only scanning app that, that is from Evernote that works the exact same as I showed you in the camera, but it does a few, other, it's got a few other features as far as saving and sharing. It doesn't just connect to Evernote, uh, but it's, you know, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. All right. Um, Evernote and Wonder, Evernote and Wonder list connected by add-on in task clone sync. Mm, I, don't know, I think that's an, it looks like it was part of a conversation, Okay. Um, but it got moved to a question. All right. Do you know what I'm talking about? Not really. But if you go to task clone site or just ask Troy in the chat, 
uh, they'll tell you whether or not it syncs with whatever tool you're looking at using. And because now Taskalon, as, as Troy's evolved, it has various levels of syncing capabilities. Some are API level, which I was showing you in the Asana thing. Others is just an email conduit where it emails tasks in. Uh, so they, depending on the app, there's a couple of different ways to approach it. All right. After an event, can I take the pile of business cards, use the Evernote camera to capture them, and then use Task Clone to input into a less annoying CRM? <laughs> yeah, you could. Well, and I'm not even sure you need to use Task Clone at that point uh, because it'll go into your. You can all of those uh, messages can come into Evernote. Yeah, I guess you could, and you could tag them, and there could be a couple of different ways. But you can save them in your Evernote Contacts Manager, put them in your regular Contact Manager, and then you can export them in a variety of different ways. And it will even, if you have the premium version, uh, create an introduction with you with the person through LinkedIn, uh, where it, it, it creates an automatic, you know, if, the, if the person is on LinkedIn, if you want to set that up. Has the course taken account of the new Evernote table functionality? I show it in the new course. Yeah, it's really nice. They've really upped the uh, formatting capability. One area that Evernote always came up second place to OneNote, in my opinion, was OneNote gives us wonderful formatting options. And Evernote's formatting options are very HTML-ish, where they don't always stick and they're not quite as flexible. But OneNote always had amazing uh, uh, formatting capabilities. Uh, Evernote took a big step forward with uh, increasing the functionality of the tables. It's in the course. All right. Um, let's see. I'm an existing uh, I'm an existing Patreon subscriber, and I have taken the previous Evernote course. Will I get the new one? Yep. Yes. I'm yeah. We're, we're, yeah. We're just preparing the emails to go out right now. To let All right. You know. Are your Are your prices in U.S. dollars? Yes, U.S. dollars. Okay. Um, Steve, do you use mind maps? I do. I, I've used things like Mohio Map, and I was a big fan of Mind Manager. Uh, I use them occasionally. I, they aren't. I tend to think linearly, so I, I don't end up using a lot of mind maps in my planning work. But I'm a big fan of them. And there are there are some great tools that integrate nicely with Evernote. I think Mohio Map is one where it takes all of your Evernote notes and it basically converts them into a big ass mind map. And it's it's amazing to see. Uh, we've got a video on it on the YouTube channel, which you can take a look at. So there, if you are mind mapping, Evernote does fit very nicely in that world. All right. Um, what's the easiest way to email a note? Dennis is asking. To email a note, just copy the link and send it. You just go to the, so just the share menu, in. say copy the link, copy the link, and it automatically copy it to your clipboard, and then just paste that in your email. That would be the easiest way. You can also, I think there's also an option to share it directly by email. Let's take a look. I never use that. Uh, yeah, just copy the public link. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, do you have an affiliate program? For this, no. Uh, what backups do you use? Uh, backups. Uh, the, there is a there is a backup functionality within Evernote that you can export all of your notes in a variety of different formats. So we just run one of those on a kind of a monthly basis as part of our regular backup. But the fact that Evernote, by its nature, uh, it, the danger is not losing your data um, because it gets lost. The danger is having your account corrupted somehow. Uh, that's really the danger with with Evernote, and so th that backup kind of creates an, uh, it creates a a, a a file by file backup do uh, of the documents. Uh, for the most part, Evernote's big, your biggest concern, I think, is security within Evernote in determining which of your notebooks should be synced to the cloud and which one should be retained as just private. Um, people like Brooks Duncan does a great job talking about the, his backup strategy, and he does he, he does multiple things. He uses a lot of PDFs in, for all of his important documents, and so he's got them backed up uh, in a place like Dropbox or something like that, as well as within Evernote. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, why did you publish Evernote? Why didn't you publish Evernote into Thinkific? That was one of the things that I went back and forth on. One of the reasons that it took a little while to get the course out was it, I love using Thinkific. It is a great LMS. But the simplicity and the elegance of publishing this Evernote course using Evernote overrode some of the benefits of the membership areas that Thinkific brought to the table. I just love the purity of having every note as the Evernote note and using the tool to teach you how to use the tool. So that was the reason. And actually what we did 
I went really far down the road of duplicating all of the course resources in both Evernote and Thinkific. And then I realized that that's going to be confusing to my students uh, as to where, where to see things. And, I, and I'm trying to make your life simpler, not more complex. So that's why I went back and just went for the pure Evernote delivery. All right. Um, you never mentioned Moleskin notebooks. I never mentioned it as one of my favorite things. I got one right here. This is a Moleskin notebook right here, which allows you to do some very cool things with Evernote where you can take pictures of all of your different pages in the Moleskin notebook. And they have stickers that they include that will actually, Evernote will identify and tag to put your notes into notebook areas, into notebooks, or to tag them. Uh, I'm not a paper note guy. So that's one of the reasons that it's not one of my favorite features. If you are a paper note guy and you use the Moleskin notebook, you're, it's going to be one of your favorite features. We include it in the course, but I don't include it in as one of my top features here. Okay. Uh, what option do you prefer for web clipping, bookmark, full note, or simple note? I've never used either. I use Evernote. Okay. Um, can the lessons be saved? Yes. Every when you reach when you reach every when every when every lesson is sent to you. Yeah, you click on it, it opens it, and it says, do you want to save this to Evernote? When you do that, what happens is it creates a copy of the note in your own notebook, and you can make notes in it, you can make changes. If I make changes to the original document, you don't see those changes, just like any changes you make aren't made on my original document. For you to get an upgraded version or an updated version, you'd have to refresh the note by reloading the note. But it becomes your note at that point there, so it's saved to your document, and you can, and you can work with it whatever way you want. Okay. Um, does Evernote integrate with Scrivener? Um, Ev Scrivener and Evernote, yes. I think there are some integration. I've never used it, but Scrivener has some functionality that's very similar to Evernote in how it does things, how you can clip content to Scrivener. Scrivener is a wonderful writing tool, a word processing tool that's really designed for script writers and authors where, you, uh, where you've got all of these wonderful writing tools. Uh, it, it's, a, it, it's one of the one of the really hidden and wonderful applications on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I've never used it integrated. Uh, maybe somebody else can comment on how they do. Uh, but there is, I know, a level of integration that's included. I'm just not too sure exactly how it's all exercised. All right. Uh, what is the big difference between Evernote, uh, between Evernote compared with Dropbox Paper? Well, Dropbox Paper is more of a collaborative tool. And Dropbox Paper doesn't have the collection tools that Evernote does have, nor does it have the search. So Dropbox Paper, in my mind, it, it, it is a much closer comparison to, say, Google Docs as a collaborative writing tool than it is to Evernote, which is a notebook and catch-all. All right. Um, John's asking, can I get the sis uh, I'm sorry, sticker. It's <laughs> can I get the stickers somewhere to use in other notebooks? No, they don't make them available like that. You got to buy their notebook in order to do that. The, the, the moleskin. Um, that's that, that would kind of be giving away the baby with the bathwater. <laughs> the that old version. Well, yeah, <laughs> little tongue tied. Um, the old web version is eroding, and the new web version has been stuck on stupid for the last two years. <laughs> is Evernote ignoring the web? <laughs> I don't know if Evernote's print, ignoring. Ignoring the web. That's a, it's a, a lot of people don't like the the web interface. Uh, I never use the web interface. I live in the desktop client all the time, whether it's in Windows or Mac is, is the tool that I use. I always have the desktop client open. So I don't have much of a comment on how frustrating it is to use the ever, the web client day after day. The web client, I think you should look at as a convenience as opposed to a, a go to. And you should be using the client, be it the uh, iOS, the Android the Mac or the Windows client as your main Evernote tool. Um, all right, Brian's asking, in a shared notebook, is there a way to send a notification when a new note is added? Yes, as a matter of fact, the notification, there's a little bell at the very top of the Evernote screen, and any time a shared note changes, there's a modification, you'll get a notification there. So it's, it's built into Evernote's OS. All right. Um, can can Evernote be used as a visual project collector like Milanote? Example, a collection of images with notes. Yep, absolutely. All right. Um, does Evernote integrate with Sync.com? I don't know. 
is sync. I'm not sure what sync.com does. So it's, it's got me there. It must sync. Sounds like what's, the, what's the name again of the mind mapping software that works with Evernote? I think it's Mohio Map. M O H I O Map. And maybe Jen can find it? our video on that, and she could drop the link to the video that we did on that. It's about a year and a half old, but it was very cool. All right. Um, what um, What about the premium version? The premium version of Evernote. Um, it, yes. For, you know. For me, Evernote is a no-brainer. If you use it the way I use it, or the way it, most of you, I think that you know, if, if you embrace it, it's a no-brainer to purchase the premium version. It's not very much money. It's about a hundred dollars a year, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood. But there's a couple of things. First of all, why would you want any feature? Why would you not have, want to have access to the entire toolkit? Secondly, you want Evernote to be a profitable company. You don't want them looking at selling or doing something else. You want them to be a healthy company because you. For me, I rely on them. That one of the things that scares me is what happens if something happens to Evernote. That, that's a legitimate concern. And so my my payments help make sure that something bad doesn't happen to Evernote So because they're, they're a healthy company. So that's kind of my philosophy on it. it. It's money well spent. It's very, very little money. Having said that, the free version is a great introduction. It really does show you, it really does show you the, basically all, all of the things. And I have to, you know, I'm, my, head is full right now with so many different questions. And I, I'm having trouble remembering exactly which features uh, are included in the free version, which ones aren't right now. So I, it's not now is not the best time for me to talk about it. But for me, it's, uh, it, oh, things like offline notebooks on your smartphone. Uh, you, you know, if you're going to be on a plane and you don't have access to Wi-Fi, although that's becoming less of an issue, isn't it? Uh, and you want to have certain notebooks, certain offline notebooks and stuff, you want to be able to work on things. It gives you the ability to do those things. So just functionally, it, it, it it's it makes it a lot better as well. So yeah, Evernote Premium is worth it. I think it is. Yeah. All right. Um, can you just review the Patreon discount and um, sure. Patreon members that had gotten the course previously? There seems to be a lot of questions around okay. that. Okay. And and I can understand that because for the longest time when we started Patreon, Evernote Made Easy was a perk that was included in Patreon. So all of our patrons historically uh, until January of this year. I think all of our patrons who signed up on Patreon got Evernote Made Easy for free along with that patronage, that support. Now, Patreon, for just as a step back, is a crowdfunding site uh, service that we use on Dottotech, and people sign up for it. They give us $10 a month, and in return, they get perks from us, and that one of those perks used to be Evernote Made Easy. When I knew I was going to upgrade the quality of the course and I was really going to commit to doing a better version of this course, I pulled that, and at the same time, I replaced that into our patrons with a webinar archive, which is all of our little tutorials, all of the webinars that we do here each week, uh, they have an access to an archive plus a discount on all of our courses. So that's the history. So if you were a patron before, I'm not too sure the date, we can look it up, but you know when you signed up whether or not you were offered Evernote Made Easy as a perk. If you signed up before that, that means that you do have access to Evernote Made Easy and you will be upgraded to the new version for free. If you signed up after that, then you have a 50% discount on the price, <coughs> which would be $75, I think. And there's a discount code in the Patreon, uh, in the Patreon uh, that you can get for for us just by reaching out to us in the Patreon chat and our uh, Patreon email system and asking us for it. And then we will send you that code. So that is how you would that you would then get access to the to it if you are after that that period. Okay. Um... Can I edit handwritten? Can I edit the handwritten notes from pen, pen ultimate or penultimate? In a, yeah. yeah, yeah, you can. As soon as you do any handwritten note at all, and uh, like I use it on my Android smartphone, I've got a Samsung Galaxy Note or Samsung Note. Uh, when I do handwritten notes on there, as soon as it's brought into Evernote, uh, Evernote goes through and it converts all of that text into all of that handwriting into text so you can search on it and you can edit it yeah it's pretty cool uh carol's asking how many notebooks are we allowed in evernote i think i have reached my maximum number of notebooks if so open a new evernote account 256 i think but you should in our course we really encourage you not to use very many notebooks i know a lot of people that have one notebook that's it and they do all wow. of their organization through tags the tags are the math magic behind organization within Evernote. So, yeah, I, if you've got that many notebooks, I'd really look at consolidating 
you might have a lot of work to do. But yeah, there is a limit, and I think it's 256. I'm not positive. All right, just in, um, it's the top of the hour. Just wanted okay, to let good. you know. Yeah, well, so we'll, we'll keep going. How many questions do we have? Still a lot of questions. We still have um, 300. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, are, we don't have too many more, actually. Okay. Um, how does Evernote integrate with MS Office, Microsoft Office? Well, if I was an Office user, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't, and I don't have, and I wasn't in bed with, One, with Evernote, I would go to OneNote. <laughs> OneNote is the equal of Evernote. It's 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 a wonderful app. It's but it integrates far better with Office than Evernote uh, can, just because of the just because of the, you're part of that ecosystem, that Office ecosystem. And OneNote has some benefits that Evernote doesn't have. Evernote has some benefits that OneNote doesn't have. But I would definitely go down the road of OneNote. Um, in your course, do you talk about collaboration with colleagues? Yes. Yeah, we, t we, we show you, we because uh, Evernote does work as a nice collaborative tool. To be fair, <laughs> I tend to use Evernote more as a solo tool. When I'm doing writing with uh, with Sophia, who is our copywriter, which was where most of our collaboration, most of our collaboration in Dottotech occurs in either Google Docs or within um, uh, Asana, is where we tend to do most of our collaboration, or in Slack. Evernote can do it all, but I'm the only person that's like deep in the Evernote world, and I use it all the time. So the rest of the team is a little bit more comfortable using Google Docs or a little more comfortable using Slack. So we tend to move there. When I do have something that's in Evernote, I often share it with them, but we don't do as much collaboration. Having said that, if you've got multiple team members who do use Evernote and are comfortable with it, Evernote has all the same collaboration functionalities you'd find in Google Docs or in any of the other good collaborative tools. All right. Um, Jim is saying he only uses iPad Pro. Do I do I have to get premium to get the features? I'm not positive exactly which ones. I, just a quick look at their feature list will tell you. I'm not sure if it does handwriting um, conversion unless you have the premium feature. That's the one thing I'm not sure about. I'm sorry. I just I just don't have that off the top of my head. Okay. Um, can you speak to security in Evernote? Yeah. So Evernote's that's one of the biggest challenges Evernote. And one of the biggest criticisms we have of Evernote is that if they haven't given us the ability to encrypt notes other than add a note, encrypt notebooks uh, when they're stored online. So here's the problem, is you create content, you store it in Evernote, and Evernote by default syncs that with Evernote Cloud Services, syncs that note, and that's what allows you to have it anywhere, you know, on your smartphone or on your other devices, is through that syncing service. Part of that syncing service means that your data lives on your computer, it also lives in the cloud. And if Evernote's ever hacked, your content is at risk. So you have to determine exactly what content is you're comfortable with. Now it's degrees of it's degrees of, of security because even if it, live, it lives on your computer, it's still not 100% secure. Nobody's computer is 100% secure. So uh, so so you have to think about what data should be stored should be stored in a regular notebook. And if you have something like tax information or client information, which is sensitive, and you shouldn't legally or morally be storing that online, then you can create something called a local notebook, which just gives you a local copy. You lose the benefits of what's of the syncing, but you gain the benefits of it being stored locally. So that we talk about that a lot within the course. Okay. Um... Uh, my Evernote is a mess. Will you cover in the course how to reconstruct it? Too many tags and too many notebooks. Uh, yes, not really. I, I don't do Evernote triage <laughs> in the course. <laughs> but what? I, but I've gone through the process, and I'm happy. You know, some, that's something that's a great thing to. When you sign up for the course, I didn't mention one of the big, big benefits of the course is you gain access to our Facebook group. And our Facebook group is a great place to have that conversation. And even though I haven't made it a part of the core course content, because most people aren't in that boat, it's a sort of conversation I'd love to engage in with you on Facebook and talk you through how I did it. Mine's still a work in progress. My Evernote is also a mess because I'm always trying out different systems and trying different ways of doing things. So I'm always in a state of flux. So I think I can give you some good insight on what to do and how to kind of pull things together. Uh, <laughs> but it's not per se part of the course content. Um, I would agree. The Facebook groups are awesome. Uh, let's see. Can you sync OneNote to Evernote? Example, use Evernote as the center of the universe. <laughs> yeah. 
You can. I, I've done a lot where I where I copy notes back and forth and I do things back and forth between them. Uh, it's uh, you can. I'm, I don't think it's the healthiest way to do things. But I, for example, uh, OneNote will allow you to embed videos directly in, which is huge. And and I've often thought, wow, I'd love to be able to deliver my courses that way instead of having to have links to the videos as we do in Evernote Made Easy. So there are some things that you can do in OneNote that you can't do in Evernote that make it worthwhile. And there are ways to make them work together. But you're basically MacGyvering it if you do that. Um, what is your view of the email feature to Evernote? I think emailing to Evernote, especially PDF files, is an amazing feature, especially for email-based bills, et cetera. It is only available with premium. Is it worth the price of premium yeah. alone? It is because of here. here here's how it, it, email to Evernote was one of my favorite features, but, that, but I because I wanted to have the alliteration of five features, I had to drop it. If there had been six features, it would have been there. So uh, what happens is if you're in your email client, Evernote has an email address and you can send content directly to it. If you're using an email a client tool like Outlook or if you're using you know, a, a, an email client as opposed to web-based email, that's a terrific way for you to get things into Evernote. So for example, when April sends me a, her invoice every month, I take that invoice and the first thing I do is I forward it to my Evernote accounting notebook so that I've got a copy of it there where I want to store it. So it's, it works great from that perspective. But the Evernote Web Clipper also recognizes email. So because I work in web-based email, I use Gmail as my main client, I just use the Evernote Web Clipper on the email and it does an even better job of allowing me to select, like you can select by changing the subject of an email using the at and the uh, uh, exclamation point before different tags and different notebooks, you can determine exactly which notebook and which tags are attached to every email that you're forwarding in. But that's cumbersome. Using the Evernote Web Clipper, I just select the notebook, select the tags, and it's off. So it's even it's even more elegant. So there are lots of ways to integrate your email with Evernote. And in the course that I teach on uh, Three Steps to Inbox Zero, I talk about getting your email out of the email system, not searching for email in your email and moving it to Evernote. That's a big part of Inbox Zero as far as I'm concerned is getting that email into Evernote. <clears throat> All right. Um, does Evernote integrate with Slack or just use Zapier? Uh, you can share notes in Slack. There's, I don't, I don't know why you would want to um, if you can share notes. I, I, I don't think there is a native integration. I think you'd have to use Zapier if you if you're going to be doing it. But I, again, I'm not too sure how you want to do that because just sharing a note into a chat is going to give you that kind of that functionality or storing the document mm -hmm. there within it. Um, so it's it's a little bit different than say a Dropbox where you've got this 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 you know this archive of files or this bin of files. So uh, I, I'm just not too sure what the end goal would be of integrating it. Okay, last few questions here. Um, Morton's asking, can you screencast with with bleh, can you screen screencast sorry from within Evernote? If I had some information I needed to upload to the web with my voiceover, could it do that? You'd have to use a screencasting tool such as ScreenFlow or something like that to do that. Okay. Is there a so, way so to what I'm saying just a minute, so oh, Evernote sorry. Evernote doesn't have a broadcast capability built in. So it's sharing. So like in a Zoom, like if you're doing a whiteboard and you want to have a white shared whiteboard, you've got to use a tool like Zoom or something like that for that. All right. Um, is there a way to copy checked off items into a new card? Not too sure. Okay. Um, Jerry's asking, do you use any, do you have any tips on using the template feature? No, it's something I haven't spent any time with. I should spend some time with that. You know, that might be something that I want to look at before I release the course too and see if I can find a place to slip it in. Good point. I'm making a note of that, a mental note. Yeah, Evernote allows you to create templates for notes. It's something that I haven't spent time with though. Thank you, whoever All just right, blocked and that, that was, oh, oh um, <laughs> you're such a geek. <laughs> Do you personally use Evernote chat much? No, we, I am a chat 
I am hard on everybody on my team to insist that all of our conversations live in Slack. And if I was to use Evernote chat, yeah, I would be flying in the face of what I try and get the rest of the team to do from a standardization point of view. I use Evernote chat if I'm collaborating on a project with Mike Vardy or with Brooks. If we're doing a little project together, we'll use Evernote chat. But even then, we prefer Slack yeah, since both, all of us use it. So. Having said that, if I had a, if we we're starting over with a small team and Evernote was at the heart of our system and we got everybody on board and we were building it, I would not have a problem using Evernote Work Chat as our main communication platform. It's just in our particular setup, because I'm the only person that lives in the Evernote ecosphere all the time, it's not, it's not necessary. And that's a wrap, my friend. Excellent. So I see a few questions. Is this recorded? Kathy's asking yes. So what's going to happen now, folks, is you're going to get an email a little bit later today with the resources that we talked about today. I'm also going to include a link to the Evernote Quick Start Guide, which is a free mini course that I have that walks you through the whole process of getting started with the course. Uh, Evernote, uh, sorry, April, can you drop in the link for Saturday's webinar? Those of you who are looking to kind of get a, get a start on Evernote, on Saturday, I'm going to take you on a tutorial and walk you through the process of starting your Evernote account from scratch on the right foot. It's kind of like a good preamble for what we'll be delivering on the course. We'll, of course, be mentioning the and doing the final early bird pitch for the course. Uh, O'Carroll's asking the link to join Patreon if we can put that in as well. Anybody who's interested there. Uh, folks, I hope that you found this valuable. It was, it was, a, it was a really good conversation today. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. We have some sad news as well today. <laughs> Jen, who is in, our, uh, who's in the control room, this is her second to last live event with Dotto Tech, at Aww. least for the time being. Jen is going on to do uh, to to spend some time uh, managing the social media for a really good social for a really good online company for ClickFunnels. She's going to be doing some work for them, and that might involve a congratulations. Yay. Yes. So she'll be live with me tomorrow on our hurts. Ask Me Anything. She'll be joining us for the Ask Me Anything. But we're really proud of her. She's going to be a terrific asset to those folks over there. And we're going to have look, April. We're going to have to take another look at ClickFunnels because the chances are we're going to have to start using it now. It's just it, nothing we <gasps> can do about that gonna have to do that sorry oh I missed all of the chat stuff that missed all the chat stuff because I had the offer up on the uh, on the recording screen oh well uh, you'll get an email the you get an email very quickly with a full replica replay which you can kind of watch again uh, another email will come later on with the YouTube replay which you can fast forward through this replay is available for 48 hours after that it's gonna be archived for the use of our patrons at patreon to all of our patrons big hug thank you very much for your for your support to the new students and Evernote made easy uh, really looking forward to it, engaging with you make sure you join the Facebook group and and get going in there and uh, on Monday you will be getting your first lessons April thanks so much Jen thanks so much we're gonna miss you we'll for all of us till next time <laughs>